What's up, what's up, people? What's up, what's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome back to another video. And today, we want to just talk about what this past two years have been since we jumped on the adventure of living on a sailboat with ha without having any experience whatsoever. Yes. Right? We are proud to say that this year we accomplished our first um, goal. It had been our goal since we started and it was to get to Grenada for hurricane season. We were planning on doing it the first year, but because of COVID we had to go back to the US and we weren't able to do it. But this year, as many of you guys know, we were able to make it to Grenada. Grenada is in the north of Trinidad and Tobago, which means that we pretty much crossed the entire Caribbean on our sailboat, just the two of us. High five, man. Good job. <laughs> Good job. So the idea was because we were doing kiteboarding and we were mostly in the water every single day. Yeah. So yeah, it made sense to get a boat and I talked to someone in one of the kite spots that they arrived by sailboat. I talked to them and I was like, yeah, we could do this too. So that's when we got the idea and we thought we were going to kiteboard every single day if we had a boat. talking about it every single day about wanting to get a boat and if we lived on a boat and how much we would spend if we lived on a boat and everything that had to do with living on a boat. I didn't want to keep continue hearing him talk about the same thing. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Let's just get the boat and that way, you know, we'll jump on it and if we like it, we'll continue and if we don't like it, then we'll figure something out. So we put a boat, we sent an offer, we, they accepted the offer. Our new home. Feels like a dream. Then everything went through, like, and then we were like, oh shit, we have a boat. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna drive the boat? We decided to buy a boat since traveling, like, with the dogs on airplanes and renting houses. Like you, like you guys know, we travel like chasing the wind, so it's pretty hard to find a house and that accepts dogs and that it's big enough for the dogs and everything. So I mean, everything is very complicated. So we decided to buy a boat so we could use as a house and chase the wind. We went down to the Keys, we took a five day course. They gave us the course in a catamaran. It was like a really old lagoon with electric engines. It's really different to our boat. Yeah. But that's sure. the first feeling we had from a boat. Yeah, that was the first ever in our yeah. entire life. And then I think when we got to the marina and Hurricane Dorian was coming, we had to move the boat by ourselves. We didn't have our teacher next to us anymore. The instructor wasn't there. And now it was like, okay, how are we going to move this 42 foot catamaran without ever, you know, like without having the instructor there. In between the learning process, we obviously had some scary moments where we had like thunderstorms. We actually went, <laughs> we went through a hurricane. We need to move the boat. Yeah. And then we tried to move the boat, but once we got out to the ocean, it was horrible. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't see the weather. We didn't we, see the we, weather. We didn't the first check time we anything. Went out. <laughs> Not even the engines. And the boat hadn't moved in a month, two months. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> everything and you know here we are like it was we're still alive <laughs> the boat's still floating the first few days we didn't even raise a sail we only went by motor so we motor most of the way yeah, from we were afraid yeah. to raise our sails yeah. i remember we're like we don't really know what's gonna happen you know what if uh, we get caught by a squall and we don't know how to react we don't know what to do so we were super nervous the first couple of months months <laughs> yeah because i remember the first time we you know when we first went out the waves were like around like seven eight feet right 
um, right, like on our head, head on, right? And it was extremely scary. I went like into panic mode. Now, if you put those waves on us right now, I think we'll be like, okay, it's not that bad because you get used to hearing the noises, the cracking of the boat, the, ca the cracking of the catamaran. I thought that first time that the boat was gonna break in half. The sounds, like you get very nervous at first when you yeah. hear like the sound of the sail, like, or like uh, like the waves ca crashing into the hull. It's like, like, is it gonna break? Is it not yeah. gonna break? <laughs> Are we gonna sink? You guys, this is like a big storm right now. Everything's, it's really rainy. The wind is really strong right now. Started, we were struggling a lot because everything on the boat was breaking and I think that's when you struggled the most because you didn't expect so many things to start breaking like I know when we first got the boat the people that had experience with boats would tell us like everything breaks you guys need to be prepared that everything breaks and you think like yeah everything breaks but you don't expect it to break so often like every day or every other day or at least once a week like you don't expect that we've been here our generator stopped working again so this is like the third time that we've had an issue with our generator if not the fourth the fifth this generator it's honestly a pain there's always something to fix on the boat and the first like six months it's that learning curve that that things break and you don't know how to fix them so it's like oh it's like let's sell the boat we don't want to live on the boat but once you start fixing like things and that you know how to like repair like something in the engine and at first you're really nervous just to put your hands on something from the boat because it's like i don't know how to fix it if i fix it wrong it's gonna break again but now like like something breaks you could just go on youtube uh find out how to fix it and just fix it by yourself if someone's gonna fix it, I wanna see how they fix it. So maybe next time I can fix it. Or for example, for the thing for the generator, they took it, I told the guy, can you make a video on how you fix it and then send it to me. So that way I learn when they take it apart, like how to take it apart and put it back together. For me personally, one of the hardest times has been recently. Again, if you guys have been keeping up, you know that um, like a month ago or so, I was really, really struggling. I think I was just burned out completely from all the work. We weren't really, you know, for me, the, what motivated me to live on the boat was kiteboarding. And we haven't kited in like as much as we used to in, since we bought the boat. Now that this week that has been like the toughest of the toughest weeks, that I have been just feeling like this emptiness and this like, this like sadness. You know, we used to kite every single day and for me that was my, my drive, like my motivation. And so when I stopped kiting, you know, the past year, obviously we haven't really kited at all because we had been moving constantly from the US to Grenada, which meant we had to keep going going, we had to stay on schedule. Instead of being going out and doing things that I would enjoy, I would actually just spend a lot of time on the computer and just a lot of time working on our business. If you guys don't know, we have, um, we own a an e-commerce business that focuses on improving the health of pets through supplements and grooming supplies. It's a book, you guys can check it out here. So I would spend a lot of time just working and focusing on our business, like, and that caused me to just get burned out. And, you know, on top of that, I hadn't seen my family. I'm super attached to my parents, super attached to my sister. So that is kind of like the sacrifice, if you want to call it that, of living an alternative lifestyle, is that, you know, I love my family, but I can't see them every day i can't see them every other week i can't see them every month so you know i have to make the most out of when i get to see them once a year or every six months i have to make the most out of it but for me you know it's a struggle it was a little hard i think in general you know it's part of life no matter if you live on a boat or if you live in a house or in a van or whatever there's ups there's downs it's going to happen it's obviously you know that's life you go through like a little roller coaster and sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're not that good 
you know, if it was all bad, obviously we wouldn't do it. The reason why we do it is because most of the things are super, super, extremely positive. I mean, I can't tell you all the things that we did in the past two years. Like for me, it was a dream to be diving with 50 sharks around me and for me to be swimming with wild dolphins and like to be, I don't know, seeing the most amazing coral reefs that we have seen and diving in like and in, in kiteboarding in super remote spots where the water is incredibly blue and like perfect blue water, like the most amazing colors. That makes up for it for me. Like, you know, that's pretty awesome. And trying to learn how to fish, uh, like the scuba diving gets me really nervous, but it's really cool. Uh, also, like everything with the boat, just like from anchoring. It's seeing, a challenge. Yeah. It's like a huge challenge, like a personal. It keeps challenge. you alive. It's like, like where are we gonna go next? Where are we gonna anchor? Let's see the climate. Uh, we need to fix this before we go. So yeah. it's like, I don't know. That's that's my happy feeling. So it keeps me, it keeps it keeps me entering, entertained, yeah. and busy, and I don't know. I like just being active it's a good life for both of us because alejo he's always been into cars and motorcycles and like all the technical stuff which you can definitely enjoy on a boat because there's, there's always things to fix right and for me i've always been into the ocean and the animals and the wildlife and nature and obviously if you live in the middle of a remote island you 100 that you 100%, you're gonna live that, yeah. If you put it on a scale and a balance, there's obviously the good moments are a lot more than the hard ones. And so the question, would you do it again? Yes. In a heartbeat? Yeah. Yeah. Would you do it again? I think so. I think we need a, a balance between the boat and land life. So we can live a long, healthy experience. Yeah. Not be always on the boat. Yeah. So that's something we're gonna figure out. Mm -hmm. but yeah. We love living on the boat, so yeah. we're not thinking about quitting yeah. living on the boat. And even if we sell the boat, it's not quitting, it's just a little change yeah. of lifestyle. We're not going to quit. But yeah, yeah, but we're not planning on changing our lifestyle. Not right now, at least. Um, but we do want to find a better way of spending hurricane season because we do feel like the past two hurricane seasons have been a little rough on us. As for hurricane season, we're mostly just anchored somewhere and we you barely move. So, and because we're very limited to where we can go, and the winds, and that you're scared that you're gonna get hit by a hurricane. So I think for hurricane season, like next year is gonna, it's gonna change. Yeah. We're gonna have some changes yeah. coming. Some coming soon. <laughs> I hope you guys join us, and I hope you guys, if you're new to our channel, you can subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell notification so that you can be notified when we upload new videos. And we will be going back on the boat. We will have lots of adventures this year. I don't even know where we're going. Well, we do know where we're going, sort of. We know the first stop. I don't first know, it's stop. a little weird because our goal was like, just get to Grenada, get to Grenada. And now we're we got to Grenada and we're like, now what? Now what is going <laughs> to happen? Like, we made it to Grenada where and now where are we going? What are we doing now? So I think we need to like... We still have a lot of islands. Yeah, of islands. course. We have the entire Caribbean. Caribbean. Most people just go to the Pacific. But no, we want to call yeah. in the Caribbean. Yeah, there's so much in the Caribbean before we go. Plus, the dogs, you know, we're not... We, we have our dogs and traveling with them outside of the Caribbean, like in the Pacific, it's impossible. Sense. So guys, stay until the end of the video so you can see a little recap of what the past two years on our boat have been. The good, the bad, the pretty, and the ugly. And, you know, we always try to share everything as much as we can with you guys. Behold. Peace. Coming in. Oh shit, I don't want to step on the shark. <laughs> You're not gonna step on one. <laughs> okay, go. Okay. Near the sharks. Oh. Are you kidding me? What's the right. point of coming here? Ready? Oh man, hopefully there's three dinghies for <laughs> <laughs>
Ya se tiró un peo. You get poop particles. <laughs> the picture, people, with the fish. Is it really? Yes, it is. Okay, let me see. Cut a fish, people. Cut a money, money. I can't believe I'm doing this. It's time to go in the water. We're going in. Just arriving to the boat and baby tell us a little bit we're arriving to the boat after provisioning for an entire weekend you came back from Spain we have to make about how many dinghy rides we're gonna make like three dinghy rides Eat three dinghy rides three. all right yeah we got a lot of stuff <laughs> all right so we're gonna check the other one out no, no, no! <laughs> He's like, wait! No, wait, I have to put a spreader over multiple? No! <laughs> oh shit. Do <laughs> you want it? Hold on. Um, you have ahead. to be kind, you have to say please. <laughs> <laughs> there's no please with the. <laughs> there's no, like, is there is something in there? <laughs> if there's a banana in there, I need to get it. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad at all, but like our guests that have never been like sailing before are like dying. <laughs> Behold. What are we doing, cool? Racing to the is that is that is it? To the sailboat. Racing to the sailboat. Ah. Hey. They are going the wrong way. she can fall off the dock. The 
depot in the trailer. The loco. Exactly. <laughs> he did it. He was pooping his pants, but he did it. ¿Qué tal la vista, Hochi? Dale, dale, dale. Se la vista. No, mira, no tiene los ojos cerrados. Hey, hazlo y prueba por allá. Hey. Hey. 